In 1888, on Monday the 25th of June, the contract for the construction of the Mafra to Briagalong railway line was signed. The contractor was Mr. David Munro and company. The quoted price, 32,464 pounds, 16 shillings and fourpence. The first sod was turned at Briagalong. Less than two weeks later, around noon on the 9th of July, and a celebration luncheon was held at the Briagalong Mechanics Institute. But later that afternoon, all attention was focused on Mafra. Houses were deserted and shops were closed because around 2.45 p.m., old and young assembled to witness the turning of the first sod at the Mafra end of the line. Mrs. Alan McLean, the wife of the senior member of parliament from North Gippsland, did the deed. That night, there was a banquet provided by the council with many, many speeches and toasts to the success of the new and long-awaited venture. In its time, the railway line was a bustling, thriving hub that transported, amongst other things, passengers, wattle bark, sugar beet, farm produce and red gum. It's been many, many years since the Mafra to Briagalong train stopped running. A group of people are here today to walk parts of the old line. They hope to get a few glimpses along the way of what it might have been like in its heyday. We are going to the top of Foster's Hill to begin our walk. Leaving Mafra, the train headed towards Stratford, then broke left along Fulton Road, up past the Mafra Golf Club, then headed towards the Mafra Briagalong Road. I can remember coming out there, we all used to go shopping or one shopping day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, a Friday, so yeah, everybody was dressed up. And yeah. I remember Mum was quite a good dresser, and well, Dad was, so I suppose everybody was up to a point in those days. They had collars and ties down on there. And the big trick in the Mafra, I remember coming out there just at the top of Foster's Hill, we had to stop and let the bright long train go into Mafra. No flashing lights, in fact, there wasn't much flashing of any sort that went on those days. But, uh, we, we enjoyed yeah, that, we enjoyed the one shopping day anyway. Foster's Hill had one of the steepest gradients of railway lines in Australia. The train struggled to climb it, but sometimes it was made even harder. We had a plate of caterpillars there a couple of years ago, oh, yeah. and they were very, very thick across the line there. And there was an incline up roughly where the Mafra tip is these days. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And so. up there, and uh, it was like putting grease under the front yeah. wheel of a mini mine or something like that, we didn't get it too far. And uh, some bright spark, I don't know why, because we all know they use sand on trains, but eventually they loaded up with a bit of sand and for, a, for a few days there to give them a bit of traction up that yeah. cutting there. It was uh, yeah, pretty heavy work, you think that a pile of caterpillars could pull up a, a steam train loaded up with timber, etc. but they managed to, so it was a feather in their cap, so to speak. Apparently the line came straight through here, then out through the goals at the other end, before the footy ground was here of course. The station was right about here. The platform was 74 foot long. Further down there was the back fence of the old Boysdale Primary School. Frank Bennett can tell us more. Back in the late 40s, Gavin Wheel and I were over at the Boysdale Railway Station one Saturday morning and the train came in and we sat, both of us standing there watching, and the driver said, would you like to come for a ride to Briagalong? And we said, yeah, no worries. 
So we both hop in the engine, and because it was a D3, uh, big driving wheels, and uh, away we went. And then talk about noise, everything works with steam. And when they put the brakes on, the noise in the engine was unreal. And when they blew the whistle at the crossing, well, that, that made our ears ring. The highlight of, for us, every week when the, was when the train went to Briag along, and uh, great memories of all, pi of all piling onto the back fence, just to wave the train driver across, he'd blow his whistle. It was a highlight for kids at school. <laughs> The main thing that, that I recall from boys though was sugar beet. That was, mm -hmm. that was the big issue, loading the sugar beet and, and they have all the old trucks. You know, a, no hydraulic force no. had to wind up no. boys no. and back it up on, to, tip the, to tip the sugar beet. Yeah. That was like a big turn. You yeah. sort of had to work your passage a bit, sort of winding all over. Yeah. And then, and someone would bring it up in a, in a horse and dry, and mm -hmm. with an old tip dry, and the horse would back up to the edge. This is the Avon River Bridge. Not far from here is the site of the famous Bushy Park homestead and the old Bushy Park railway station. When we were young there, we, we used to uh, get our push bikes, and the, the top of the bridge was, oh, I don't know, probably three quarters of a metre wide, wouldn't have been. Like we used to get our push bikes and lift up on, on that and then make out we're going to ride on that. <laughs> and there was some poor no, you're little good. old ladies which are about my age now sort of thing, down below there looking up. Look at those boys, they're going to ride across that. What are we going to do? And they were just about having coronaries. But, um, it's good anyway, really. we didn't go ahead with it, but <laughs> looking back on some of the the things and pranks we got up to, we did all yeah. deserve to die before we were to right old age of six and a half, I think. <laughs> and then I had to the bridge up. Yeah. Yes, and everyone was really upset that the, that the bridge went, and I think mum and dad were too. Why bring the, take the bridge down? Why not just leave it? Yes. It was quite extraordinary because the, the, everyone in the district really loved that old bridge, and the pylons were just so special. I remember when it was uh, blown up, um, the engineers had a number of attempts to blow the pylons up mm. and they didn't put enough jelly night in so they decided to multiply it by X amount and it, it was such an explosion that it cracked the foundation of Mum and Dad's house. Really? Yes, and there were cracks there about half an inch wide and if it happened today there'd be law cases, lawsuits mm. and things but back in those days they just accepted it. Oh, well, so did they, did they, brought, they did the whole bridge in one day, just a ball, that was yes, it? Yes, yeah, that five big explosions, it was gone. Mm. Dad would say, if you put, I can't do Dad's voice, <laughs> how would you go? If you put a penny on the line and got back and waited, um, the rail, the, the train would flatten the pennies, I remember that, flatten them flat like that. So um, he walked with me a few times across and we very carefully put the pennies along the line. And then the train would be coming up from Jack Lee's, you could see it coming, and we'd have to get down and then hide in behind the fence. Um, I think Dad was always a bit scared that the train driver might see him. Then the train would pass, and then the thing was, where are the pennies? I don't think we ever found a penny. And then we get to Bushy Park, and uh, we dropped off two trucks, our four wheel trucks and picked up two trucks and the guard, we had a guard's van on the back. Uh, I can't remember how many trucks we had on but we left two at Bushy Park, picked up two there and he said there's what'll probably be wattle bark in there. My family lived uh, many years ago right near the Bushy Park station and Dad used to tell us that they could go to Melbourne and back in the day from, in a day from the Bushy Park station. Uh, in, in Mafford and down to Tarawan and, and back. It's hard to credit that they could do that, but that was, that was the way the system worked. Um, my recollections of Bushy Park there was only a little old derelict hut, which I think was the um, uh, Weybridge shed or something that was standing when I was a kid. The train line came over the bridge through the Bushy Park station 
and then through the avenue of trees to here, where it ran off across the paddock to the crossroads corner. How are you enjoying the walk? Wonderful. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Brings me back to the old days. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you ever travel on the train? I had one little ride yes. from Boys Dove School. I used to go to school there. Yes. And I, I was told to let me out. I was scared still. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I went on it. It's nice also catching up with some of the other folk who remember the railway line. It is. And a, a lot I've met here today, like Greg Lee, yes. when he was little, I used to walk across the railway line from Boy Star yes. uh, to his place, which was Bushy Park. Near the bridge, the side of the bridge. I think the trains run sometimes four times a day when oh. they had, you know, the beet, the sugar beet, and the, uh, the wood, the timber. Oh, well, we had good times. Oh, I bet you did. Good times. I bet you did. Got up to mischief and a few things. The train from Mafra would have come in from over there. There was a line on either side of this grassy bump. The one on this side went down there to where the turntable used to be. And then the driver said, well, now we've got a, a job for you help us turn the engine on, on the turntable at Bryag. That was hard work, but we did it. After the rails stopped, the turntable was still working and kids used to play on it. One of the McNally boys fell underneath it and cut his foot off. The kids were pushing it around, it was very heavy, and couldn't stop it. They put a lock on it after that. It was dismantled later, and the railway house too. But what really killed the railway here? Oh yeah, a truck, so I presume. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's like it's just an extension of what's yeah. happened now. There's not even, mm -hmm. there's no shops in Boys Town. I mean, the town's just died because people can get in a, a car or a truck and drive one in. But, but the, loss, the, yeah. the loss of the red gum mm. harvesting here must have had a fair effect yeah. on it. You know, that, my, my stories we heard were that you know, that was the main freight that was carried. I think for all little kids it's that, um, it's that sight of the steam with the noise, which was just probably the most exciting thing of the day. Mm -hmm. 